أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله we seek protection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the accursed shaitan, the rejected in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All the praise, all the thanks, and all the glory is due to none but Allah. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We beg Allah to forgive us. We beg Allah to assist us. We beg Allah to assist us and help us. We have faith and we have reliance only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fly for refuge unto Allah from the mischief and the malice of our own selves. And we fly for refuge unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil consequences of our sins, of our actions, of our mistakes. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one and nothing can guide that person. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go into error due to the sins, due to the rancor, due to the oppression, due to the mischoices that that person has made, no one and nothing can then guide that person. I stand before you this day and I bear witness openly without any compulsion, without any force upon me that there is nothing worthy of worship except the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and messenger. Allah admonishes, Allah reminds you and I of our duty in the Quran when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has the right to be feared and mindful of and do not die except in a state of Islam and a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm about to proceed. So, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, the past few times we've been talking about and reflecting about one of the surahs in the Quran, the 88th surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Ghashiyah, uh, the which means the overwhelming, uh, the covering. And so, inshallah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'd like to, inshallah, uh, keep reflecting on this surah. Uh, but uh, before we do that and we keep going forward, let's let's look at, uh, subhanAllah, with some of the points that were made already with regards to this surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah out by asking a question, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Has there come to you the news, the narration of the overwhelming day, of the covering day. And uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after following up this uh, su- uh, this, uh, this ayah, then says, That on that day, uh, some faces, some faces on that day will be weary, will be overwhelmed, will be, subhanAllah, uh, uh, obviously worried, not in a good state, you know, subhanAllah, overwhelmed by the terror and the horror of that day. Some faces on that day. And why was that? Uh, we learned in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَامِلَةٌ نَاصُيبَةٌ That these people, they worked hard. They made so much effort. Doing what? For the dunya. At, at what expense? For the akhirah. So they made um, all of this effort, عَامِلَةٌ And on that day, they were they became weary. نَاصْلِبَةٌ They became, uh, subhanAllah, they're, they're, they're overwhelmed on that day and they're worried on that day. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us then what is then the reward of those people who made just the, the effort with regards to this dunya at the expense of the akhirah. What is then the result of that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says uh, in the third ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَعَمِلَةٌ نَاصِبَ فَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَ That they will enter into the into the hellfire into a blazing hellfire that uh, this nar it is has the quality of hamia and we talked about how the scholars they translate and then give the commentary that this this hamia has this quality of, of punishing and burning 
and it's so hot and blazing hot, but, but the, the pain doesn't go away. Even though the extremities and the body is burning, the pain of the, this fire doesn't go away. It's constant pain. So then we talked about if you think about, okay, you're in a place that's subhanAllah hot and, and burning, what have you, what's the relief to that? The relief obviously to that when, you, when you're overwhelmed and you're tired and you're thirsty is you want to go for water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about uh, what is then uh, the water of the hellfire, of the, of the place of Jahannam. Tusqa min aynin aniya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that they will be given to drink from the ayn, from this spring that has the quality of aniya, which means that the water only comes up when it boils up. Whenever it's boil, it boil, it gets to a boiling point, then the only then does the, the, the flow out of the spring. And it falls on the faces of these people. So then what about sustaining oneself besides that? What about the food? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us then a taste of well, one of the times, uh, uh, one of the types of foods of the hellfire, and he says, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِي That they will be given to drink, uh, I mean, given to, uh, no food except the dari. And we talked about that this dari, uh, it comes from a, a, a thorny a plant that is, uh, subhanAllah, it's thorny and it's bitter. And, uh, and, and, and if you go out it's a, this, to this desert plant, you'll see that none of the animals, none of the creatures can withstand eating this except for one, the camel. And you'll see how that becomes important in this, in the, uh, further on in the, in, the, in the chapter, in the surah where Allah SWT talks about the camel. But uh, then we also learned that the kuffar during the Rasulullah's time when they heard this ayah, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِي uh, They said, the dari? Oh, well, our, our camels, our camels eat the dari and they're they're nice and fat and, and plump and what have you they're doing fine so that's no big deal so they started mocking and making fun of this this uh, this food that is going to be given in the hellfire so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then uh, responded back to their mockery and to their making fun of by saying that لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ دَرِي لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُرُ that this dari that this food will neither nourish nor will it uh, avail from hunger. I mean, when we eat, what are we? What do we? What's the purpose that we eat for? Obviously, we're hungry. We want to eat something that fills us up. We feel satisfied, and then also it should nourish us to sustain us. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying here that this dari has none of those benefits. It's neither going to fill the stomachs up, and neither is going to nourish. So these people will just be eating this thorny, bitter, disgusting tasting plant, and they will be keep eating and eating and eating, and it brings no. Uh, nourishment and brings no uh, uh, no no filling up of the stomach. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that kind of uh, uh, disaster and end. So again, my brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, this uh, this first discourse or this first paragraph is talking about the horrors of the day of judgment and talking about the worries of those people that made the amil in this world at the expense of the akhirah and talking about and giving us some of the tastes of the punishment of the hellfire. So for us, it should be something to where when Allah SWT says, Hal ataka hadith al has the, has the news of the day of judgment come to you? Has the, the news of the overwhelming, the covering day come to you? Inshallah, we should be responding back to this and saying, yes, for sure, it has come just like our beloved Rasul SAW did. And we should be making effort and struggling and striving to be not of those who on that day, subhanAllah, will be weary and, and anguished and subhanAllah in a, in, in a state or not. So what happens then? After this, after this, this a hard description of the hellfire, of the torments, some of the, some of the torments of the hellfire, of the boiling water fa falling to the faces and the eating of the thorny plants and what he, have you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, sends a breeze, a cool breeze, a cool lifting, and changes the subject now to the other. Because we said that, uh, uh, the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that some faces on that day. So we're told that other faces are not going to be in that state of worry. So what are those other faces? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then uh, that uh, na'ima that some faces on that day uh, will be happy, will be joyful, uh, will be subhanAllah uh, over, over overwhelmed by the gift that they're, they're giving. 
Na'ima here is the, the scholars they translate literally means when the face that one is given when when you are given a gift an overwhelming gift so imagine now you're giving this gift the eternal bliss of Jannah the eternal stability of Jannah the eternal subhanallah reward of Jannah imagine how your faces will be on that day inshallah you know so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about some faces on that day will be Na'ima will have this face subhanallah of happiness in, in joyfulness and they'll be overwhelmed by it subhanallah wa bihamdi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, the, those, those faces inshallah uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after that says uh, subhanallah lisa'iha radiya that with their effort they are going to be radiya they're going to be satisfied so the scholars here mention that this word, uh, this sa'i that is mentioned in this ayah, it refers to these people that these have these happy, joyful faces. They are going to be so, subhanAllah, happy and joyful uh, with regards to the sa'i that they made, that the effort that they made. And the sa'i is translated as meaning that they took their deen seriously, that they made effort in an urgent, when someone makes an, an effort in an urgent way, this is, this is called sa'i. So these people, they were urgent with regards to uh, their efforts. And the scholars, they mention that it's specifically talking about the efforts that we make for the Akhirah, you know. So, so yes, we do live in a, in, a, in a country, in a non-Muslim country, where it, there is some struggle and there is some striving in order to hold tight to our deen. There is, it, it, it's not that easy, obviously, to, subhanAllah, go out in the public and go and make salah, you know. But subhanAllah, we should look, realize that look at what the reward of it is. On that day, those people are going to be so overjoyed and so overwhelmed by this effort that they made with Salah. Yes, it, it is hard. It is an effort to, to deny ourselves of food and water and to fast for one, one long month. And now we're coming into the, the long months, the heated months, uh, subhanAllah, with regards to fasting. Yes, it is an effort. And it is an effort to... to, to uh, Push away shaitan and take out your checkbook and write for the masjid and write for the yatim and help this noble cause and not help those noble cause. But again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, They're going to be happy on that day. They're going to be overwhelmed on that day by this urgency that, that they made, this effort that they, that they made. They're going to be so overjoyed with that. And also the scholars tell us with regards to, to this, that, that uh, this, the reward of this is not coming right now you know it's on that day that we're going to be having this face as if we've been given the gift it's on that day we're going to feel so happy and honored with our with our efforts specifically so so the the the, the work with regards to the akhira it does take effort you know and and think about it yourself think about it somebody calls you up says brother salam alaikum yes brother i know you're not that busy this evening let's go for salat alaysha what what happens to us subhanallah hot, you know, economy is pretty bad, I got to pay, you know, for every mile that I travel, that's three dollars gallon, and all these excuses that come up to our mind, you know, subhanAllah, you know, brothers standing up in the masjid, brothers, please give ten dollars, please give twenty dollars to Palestine for Kashmir, for this, oh, economy is bad, I don't know about my job, all this stuff, you know, the shaitan is, 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 is promising us the faqr, but then when it comes to the, the worldly, uh, the worldly life, somebody calls you up and says, Brother, let's go to the bowling alley and let's go have some fun there. Oh yeah, let's go right away, boom, without even thinking about it. We go to the store, we uh, go to subhanAllah, Walmart and what have you, we, we, we pick all the stuff, we throw it in our carts, no thinking about it whatsoever. We uh, hit the, uh, the, the, the card, the debit card, and there's no pain and there's no effort. But when it comes with regards to the, the, the effort, with regards to giving the charity, with regards to struggling, with regards to striving, it, it's, it's hurtful, it's painful. Why? Why is that? It's because subhanAllah, as human beings, we're so in ajil. We want the satisfaction right away. We want that, that feeling right away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll see now in these ayat that we re read, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us mansions, and it's on, up on high places, and there's waterfalls coming down, and you are up on these top, uh, these couches that are raised, you have these uh, cushions that are put, all of these things, but is it right now? No. And, and as human beings, because it's not right now, we think, well, you know, 
when I become, uh, you know, astaghfirullah, some people in, in Afghani culture, they say, Sar Safid is Safid, but but is Sar Janamar Like like when I'm when my hair is white and my beard is white, then I'll make effort for that because it's coming later. So I'll make effort for it later. But how do we know, Subhanallah, when we're gonna die? How do we know when we're gonna be leaving uh, leave this world? So we're living in this fast food country. We're living in this 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 age time and age where we want instant gratification. And and Subhanallah, us Muslims, sometimes we fall in, into that. So yes, this. Uh, they are going to be with their efforts satisfied but it's going to come later it's going to come it's going to take some time and Allah SWT is promising it and we have to be assured of it but it, it, it's not going to happen right away so subhanAllah may Allah SWT make us of those who make sabr and, and efforts with regards to the deen inshallah and realize the importance of struggling and striving with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and, and keeping ourselves under the banner of La ilaha illallah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now talks about, after this, the specifics now of Al Jannah. So we, we had now a discourse and explanation of the, the climate, of the food, of the water, of the hellfire. Now Allah is going to give us a taste of with regards to the Jannah. What is, what is some of the taste of it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the next ayah, Fi Jannatin Aliyah. They will be therein in a garden that is aliyah. Ali, this is elevated. This is raised up, subhanAllah. You know, I mean, in real estate, I know uh, some people, subhanAllah, are in, in, that, in that business. And also when you, when you go search, especially in Phoenix, this is very relevant to us. Think about the neighborhoods that are like the most exclusive, that everybody is trying to go and buy, buy, buy real estate and, and, and have a house there. Pretty much all the time, it's up on the hill. It's up on the mountain. It's up a place where you have a commanding view of the whole city, subhanAllah, right? How many times you've seen a, an ad for, for real estate, uh, mountain view or lake view, you know, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanAllah is telling us here, see, Allah, Allah knows us best. You know, this thing that us human beings, we've been running after for thousands of years, Allah subhanAllah is saying, I'm going to give you all of that. So I'm going to give you this mansions, and it's not going to be down low in the floodplains where when the rains come and what have you and everybody gets flooded out. It's up high. And everywhere in every city that you go to, the most expensive real estate, the most expensive places are up high. So Allah SWT is telling us here that you're going to be in this Jannah. Now this is another kind of Ghashia. We talked about the, the overwhelming day, uh, the day, day of judgment. Now this is a Jannah Ghashia. This is, this is the gardens that is overwhelming. These jungles that are overwhelming us. And you're going to be up high. And then, then the second ni'mah. So that's one blessing. What's the next blessing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, La tasma'u fiha la ghiyah. That they, that, that he specifically, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will not hear the la ghiyah, the laghwa, the vain talk, the hurtful talk, the, the vulgar talk, the insulting talk, the hurtful speech. And why is this important to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? This is important um, to Rasulullah, and this is important to us believers, and it's impor important to the da'i, because what happens many times? You go and you tell yourself, you tell others, you tell your family, and what happens? Sometimes we hear hurt hurtful speech. Oh, brother, you're too, <coughs> you're too extreme. You know, take it easy. You know, and what did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi hear? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that they will, that will have in the hellfire nothing but dari. And what do the kuffar do? They joke around. They say, oh, our camels can take that. That's no big deal. Another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that over the hellfire is 19 guardian angels. One of them stood up and said, oh, I can take those on. 19 angels, no big deal. You know, so, so all of this, this mocking, all of this insulting, this Rasulullah is making all of this effort, giving his life giving his blood, giving his toil to save people from, from this disaster and so they can be successful in the Akhirah and what are the people are responding back? They're responding back with laghwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about specifically to Rasulullah and other places he's talking about to us that there'll be no laghwa and no kithab on that, on, on, in, in the Jannah. And why is that important? Well, look in this world. Do you want to go to a place and live in a place where there's loud music and rapping and people screaming and what have you? No. 
You want to go to a nice, quiet neighborhood. You want to go to a place where there's no laqwa, there's no, there's no lying and what have you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us that in Jannah. That you are going to go to a place where there is no, uh, subhanAllah, laqwa, there's no vain talk, there's no rapping going around, and there's no lying. There's no, uh, subhanAllah, hurtful uh, speech. Also, this is important because this tells us that, you know, in this world, no matter how much we achieve with regards to this world, let's say somebody's a billionaire, okay? They have uh, billions of dollars. They have the biggest houses. They have the, the most expensive cars and what have you. If someone near and dear to them, their wife, their children, their parents, say some, some laghwa, some vain talk, some idle talk, tell me, even if they had millions or billions or trillions of dollars, that won't take that hurt away. You can't, you can't buy, you can't spend money to get rid of that hurtful feeling away. You know? So people in this world, you know, that... Even if they're rich, even if they have the blessings of, 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 uh, of money and what have you, they, won't, they, you, they can't totally, uh, subhanAllah, cover themselves from this hurtful, lying type of speech. So obviously this also tells us about us as Muslims that we shouldn't be doing this in this world. But specifically, we're being told here that this is one of the na'mah and one of the blessings of the uh, Jannah that no one is going, no one there will be hear, hearing this vulgar, this uh, harmful speech there, subhanAllah. And the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِيهَا عَيْنٌ jariya. So now imagine again, your, your, your mansions are up high on this lofty hill or mountain or what have you, it's up in a high location. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that فِيهَا عَيْنٌ jariya. That there is going to be these flowing springs. These flowing rivers. So imagine the waterfalls. You know, you have, you're up high, and now you got waterfalls. And this is again, Subhanallah. This is human nature, right? We've been running after this for thousands of years. Go out to the fancy uh, hotels. Go out to the fancy homes, and what do you see? You see swimming pools. You see the fountains. You see the uh, the waterfalls, because people have always been Subhanallah uh, somehow attracted to that water, the, the, the sound of, it, of, of running water, the serenity that it gives, the, the, the swimming in it, the playful in it. This is something that people are running to in this world. And Allah SWT is saying, you're going to have waterfalls, and you're going to have rivers, and you're going to have springs in your home, in Jannah, running around your mountains, subhanAllah there. So the same thing that we've been running after, that we everybody's struggling and killing ourselves in this world, Allah is telling us you're going to have what? You're going to have that, but you're not going to only have that just, you know, for the temporary life that we have in this world. It's going to be for the eternal life, subhanAllah. فِيهَا عَيْنٌ jariya. They will have therein, uh, subhanAllah, they will have therein running uh, springs in their property. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it says after that, uh, subhanAllah, فِيهَا سُرُرٌ marfu'a. That therein, they shall be on raised thrones, on raised couches, therein, set up high. And Marfu'a specifically is telling us to hear that someone has done this already. So you're in your mansions, and you have all of these decor with regards to the couches, and with regards to the appliances, and with regards to the, uh, the, 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 the paintings or what have you. And someone has already done it by the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that obviously that it's the angels by the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so again, picture now yourself subhanAllah in this high real estate mansions with waterfalls and you got these couches and these are all, all raised up high. And again, uh, think about this world and connect it back to our experiences in this world. You know, what, what do people do? When they when they're living in places like that, I mean, go go check out uh, one of these homes that are up, up on the on the hills or in the mountains. People are sitting out on their porches and they're kicking back and they're holding what have you, and they're drinking. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that you're gonna get that. So you're gonna be on these raised couches and on these raised platforms on this raised uh, homes, with the waterfalls, and you're gonna have what? You're gonna have a commanding view of all that you own, Subhanallah. And what is that? As a minimum. We as Muslims, we, we learn 
from the Sunnah of our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it is the one that gets the least is ten times the kingdom of this world. Ten times the kingdom of this world is the least amount of property that, that, that will be given, subhanAllah. Imagine those who are struggling and striving and they'll be in Jannat al firdaus for example, subhanAllah. Imagine what that is. And again, us Muslims, uh, we you know sometimes we we get we get uh, we get taken away by the ghafla by the by the curtain of this world by the mirage of this world and we're running for a little piece of the desert here in, in Arizona and killing and struggling and striving ourselves when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us look you're going to have all of these na'ma and these na'ma subhanallah again we talked about it also comes with stability because people you know as we we learned recently here with the foreclosures and what have you you know, you might have that mansion, you might have that those fancy homes, you might have those those luxuries in life, but it's not going to last forever. It could be taken away. But in Jannah, it's already been all done for us, and it's a permanent, subhanAllah, uh, success. It's a permanent success. So continuing on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَأَكْوَابٌ مَوْضُوعًا And goblets will be set and placed therein. So this goblet, these glasses are these, these, these glasses that don't have the handles, it's kind of like, I guess, you can think of it like uh, those vase type of uh, handleless goblets. Those will be set in place. So not only are you going to have your couches, and not only are you going to have your, your thrones and what have you, but the, these, this decor with regards to the dining set, the utensils, all that stuff has been set. And all of that, in, in this, this word, mawdu'a, uh, the scholars mention that this is something that has been done for you, and, and so you're sitting there, you're kicking back, you're chilling on your couch, and you're, you've got this, this, this goblet in your hand, you're drinking, and what's happening? It's getting filled up every time you drink from it, subhanAllah. And again, take that to your experiences of this world. What are people, when you go to a fancy, uh, fancy restaurant, how is it set up? You walk in, mashallah, uh, the utensils are all set. The, the knives, the, the, the tables, or what have you, it's all set, ready to go. As soon as you sit down, they throw the napkin on you and say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, what do you want? All of that, subhanAllah, is, is set to go. That's what people are struggling and killing themselves to try to get in this world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, and Allah knows our nature, and Allah knows that we're running after that, and saying that you're going to get that. All of, uh, and the goblets will be set and placed therein. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَمَا رِقُمَ سْقُوفَ وَزَرَابِيُّ مَبِثُوثَ And the cushions shall be arranged, uh, arranged in rows, and there'll be fine carpets spread out. So here you are chilling on your couch, here you are chilling on, on, your, on your throne, and you have these cushions uh, up, set upon row upon row. You know how the kids, whenever they see some fluffy beds and what have you, what do they do? They go over there and jump on it, and they have fun and what have you. So this is exactly what's happening. You're seeing these cushions and rows, and you're moving them and adjusting them to be to be nice and comfortable. And you see that wazarabi uh, yuma bithuta, and you see these these area rugs spread out all over as far as the eye can see, in plural form. And that's exactly what people do in this world. Go to the fancy hotels again. Go to the fancy subhanallah homes and what have you. You see the nice finished floors, the marble travertine floors, and what do they have? They have those sectional rugs, and they say. And it was hand stitched in Persia and here and there and what have you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you're going to be getting that. You're going to have these uh, carpets that are spread out, subhanAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, inshallah, give us the reality of being of those who are mindful and, 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 and mindful of staying away from the punishment of the hellfire and running and striving and struggling for the na'mah of the jannah. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن الذي معنا فعنا وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم مالكم برا وفرحيم لا سأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى فقير نسى استغفر الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين اللهم صل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم بارك على محمد في الأولين اللهم بارك على محمد في الآخرين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عما بعد تبرسيد. So brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, to conclude, 
we've been talking about the overwhelming uh, al-ghashiyah, the 88th chapter of the Quran. We've been talking about subhanAllah, the discourse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, about the, the, the people who on that day of, uh, on the, on the day of judgment, they're going to be worried. And those people, they struggled and they strived and they made effort at the expense of the akhirah. And we talked about and we learned how they will be thrown at them, the boiling hot water, and how they'll be in this hamium, this 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 hellfire, this nar that has this 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 effect of continuous punishment. And they'll be eating this. The, one of the the food is dari, and subhanallah, this dari brings no satisfaction and, and no uh, uh, no nourishment, subhanallah, with regards to the hunger. And we then we talked about the na'mas, the blessings of being in those mansions that are up on high, that have the waterfalls, that are subhanAllah, uh, have the raised thrones, have the raised couches, have the set of all the utensils and all of the appliances and everything is set and there's people waiting, there's servants waiting for these people that have struggled and strived and have made it to the Jannah, that are guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the, the, the ni'mah of this is that again we are a people that need constant reminder this dunya subhanallah it puts too much of the curtain there's too much ghafla too much mirage in our eyes so we as Muslims need to keep going back and back and reminding ourselves and, and struggling and striving of what is the ultimate goal yes we are living in this world we're not supposed to be like monks and just totally disconnect ourselves with the world yes we should be with regards to working with this world but let the world be in our hands and not in our hearts and keep our eyes focused with, with regards to the ultimate reward the ultimate reward of al jannah the eternal bliss of al jannah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah bring the reality of this to my heart and to your heart to make us dutiful observant muslims to be of those who struggle and strive in his cause and make effort in his cause let us make dua to Allah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi l'akhra fi hasanata wa qina da bannar. Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina wa qta'ana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna islam kama hamilta huwa lalladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammin la ma la taqat lana bih. Wa'afu anna wa aghfir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansarna lal qawmi kafirin. Ibadullah inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Wa itaidu al-qurba wa anhan al-fahsha wa al-munkari wa al-baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon wa la'zikru Allah ta'ala wa awla wa zur wa jallu wa tamu wa hamu wa akbar wa aqim al-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashahadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala salah. Qadqa ma fi salah. Qadqa ma fi salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Please, brothers, sisters in Islam, look to your left and right. Make sure your lines are straight. Put the back of your feet on the line. Let's pray as if this is the last salah. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنفقوا 
أنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم my brothers and sisters in Islam may Allah accept our prayer in so Allah and you know that the food is there so please buy the food money will go to the center of living and also donate generously that we have uh, the box Islamic center of living please uh, generously you know that we're gonna soon we're gonna go for construction so so we need uh, really really and also one other announcement that third the first Saturday of Ramadan we will have fundraising dinner inshallah the details will be uh, uh, let you know later. But yeah, reserve that time and tell other people also. Jazakumullah uh, khair. What was the name of the brother or sister who had the stroke? Who oh, another brother had. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the Abdul Matin, the father of brother Abdul Batin, is sick. Please make dua for him. May Allah him in your dua. Make dua. Allahumma sallam. Waspi Mardana, Waspi Mardana Muslimin. Allahumma Aspina, Waspi Mardana, Waspi Abdul Mateen, Waspi Mardana, Waspi Mardana Muslimin. Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad, Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad.
صل على محمد اللهم صل على محمد صلاة دائمة مقبولة توجيب الله قال عزيز اللهم اشفنا واشفنا 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 المسلمين جزاكم الله خير جزاكم الله جزاكم الامام ان شاء الله 